A very warm welcome to the programme. Well, it has taken half a century, but NASA is one step closer to putting humans back on the moon after giving the go-ahead to the launch of a major test flight on Monday. The agency's Artemis mission is being heralded as the start of a new era of space exploration. You are watching the Flight Readiness Review Briefing for NASA's Artemis One mission. Liftoff of this first uncrewed flight test is currently targeted for Monday, August 29th at 8.33 a.m. Eastern Time from historic Launch Pad 39B. It's expected the mission will lead eventually to the first woman and the first person of colour setting foot there. It is the Apollo mission for a new generation, as our science editor Rebecca Morell explains. After a 50-year gap, we're heading back to the moon and it all starts here with the Artemis mission and NASA's huge rocket. It's called the Space Launch System, or SLS for short, and it's the most powerful rocket ever built by the US Space Agency. It stands nearly 100 metres, about 320 feet tall, roughly the same height as a 32-storey building. Its colossal size means it's really heavy, so it needs lots of power. It has four engines, but even those aren't enough to get this rocket off the ground. So what it also needs are these two huge boosters. They all use fuel and the biggest part called the core stage is full of fuel. In fact, fuel makes up 90% of the weight of this entire rocket. Now, you might be wondering where the astronauts will go. Well, it's here near the top in the Orion crew capsule, but not this time. This is a test flight, so there are no people on board. The time has come to put the space launch system to the test. As it readies for blast off from Cape Canaveral in Florida on launch pad 39B, the same one used for Apollo, it will be nerve wracking. Three, two, one. The rocket thunders away from the Earth, eventually reaching speeds of nearly 25,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers an hour. As each component of the rocket completes their job, they separate. The Orion spacecraft is on its way. There's a long journey ahead. It's 380,000 kilometres, about 240,000 miles to the moon. After its launch, the spacecraft enters into a low Earth orbit. Then, with a go from mission control, the engines ignite, giving it the big push it needs to escape our planet's gravity. It takes several days to reach the moon, with the spacecraft making small adjustments along the way. At first, the spacecraft flies in close, 100 kilometres, that's 62 miles above the lunar surface. Then it enters a much larger orbit, swinging more than 65,000 kilometres, about 40,000 miles beyond the moon. That's further than any spacecraft built for humans has ever flown. During the several weeks Orion is in orbit, NASA will collect important data and check how the spacecraft is performing. Finally, after another close flyby, it's ready to head for home. Now, things get hazardous. As the spacecraft nears Earth, it has to enter our atmosphere at exactly the right angle. If it gets this wrong, it will burn up. So, its huge heat shield protects it while the temperature rises to nearly 3,000 degrees Celsius. A series of parachutes open, massively slowing it down before splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. Rebecca Morell, BBC News. And not long to wait either. It's all taking place next Monday. Well, I talked to Alan Boyle, who's a science writer and space reporter. I asked if he felt the excitement over NASA's Artemis mission was similar to that of the Apollo launch over 50 years ago. Yes, indeed. Uh, looking toward the past, uh, they have Snoopy as one of the mascots on board, and Snoopy played a big role in the Apollo program. So there are all sorts of callbacks to Apollo, and they're trying to move this forward. Artemis was the sister of Apollo, and in the same way, they hope that this will be a sister program to the glory days of NASA 50 years ago. And in terms of the important, you know, technological changes that have happened since then, uh, Rebecca there explaining some of the risks, what could go wrong, etc. Your thoughts? 
Well, uh, it's a uh, it's a heavier uh, spacecraft and a hev- and a pretty heavy rocket. In some ways, they're trying to recapture the spirit of the Saturn V rocket. This will be the most powerful rocket. So, uh, years ago, a NASA administrator called this Apollo on steroids, and I think that's still a good way to describe it. Yeah, and and in terms of you know the first woman, the first person of color uh, being on on the mission to the moon. When when people are on the mission to the moon, when could that happen? Do you think? Well, the plan is that after this mission, there will be a kind of a repeat of this mission, but with a crew on board in 2024. And then as early as 2025, you would have uh, people landing on the moon using the SpaceX Starship as the lander. And so that's going to be a really spectacular mission, two of the biggest rockets in the world working together to bring people back to the moon. And and how important do you think is this for NASA to be, you know, at, at the forefront of all of this in in regards to you know space exploration, when we've seen so much coming from the likes of Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, others who are trying to do this. That's right, that this is NASA's turn to uh, have the spotlight. Uh, in recent years, uh, SpaceX and Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin have taken more of the spotlight. And I've had people still ask me, well, uh, is NASA doing anything in spaceflight? And so this is NASA's chance to shine and show that they are still on the final frontier. And uh, so they're, they've got all sorts of things planned to boost their role in space exploration. How excited are you about this? I'm pretty excited. I mean, uh, I, I'm, that's going to be one big rocket blasting off, so that'll be pretty impressive. And uh, I think the big push is going to be when they put people on board. That's always the way it is. Uncrewed space flights are one thing, but when you put a crew on board and you have human lives at risk, that lifts it up to another level. It certainly does. And Monday is the time to tune in. That was Alan Boyle there.